You know, what about non-insulin requiring nutrients such as fructose? Um, Rick Johnson and Lou Cantley have um, both spoken about this. What, um, what, if anything, did you uncover about the potential role of fructose in cancer? Yeah, um, that was one of the more surprising parts of the story for me, uh, in, in, in humbling in a, in a way as well. Uh, and, you know, a reminder, a reminder to me, you know, I was writing about Warburg who always believed too strongly in his own ideas and couldn't, you know, accept that they may be wrong. And, you know, it's anytime you're writing a book that has any kind of argument and you sort of fall into that trap and, and have to remember that, you know, science changes and not everything's proven. So I had decided, you know, early in my writing process that, uh, I thought sugar, sucrose, was a big part of this story. Uh, but my assumption was that it was all by way of driving, you know, liver fat and insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. And then um, in recent years, this work out of Cantley's lab and Richard Johnson's and uh, has shown that, uh, you know, even independent of the, the effects on insulin, that fructose seems to drive you know, certain cancers that, that, you know, particularly in the colon that are able to get the fructose uh, and uh, actually, you know, turns on, you know, through sort of a, an odd bit of metabolism actually turns on the Warburg effect and allows sort of ATP to go down and then glucose to flow in. But um, the surprising part for me was that, um, you know, that could be disassociated with insulin. I had to, to step back and say that, um, you know, maybe, maybe sugar is, is even worse than we thought and uh, is, is sort of causing cancer in two different ways in, in some cases. Yeah, that, that to me is the most interesting question. Um, still somewhat unresolved, frankly, although I think Rick Johnson's work is among the most compelling I've seen to, um, to disentangle that relationship of fructose, um, independent of its caloric contribution. Um, and as you said, it, this, is, this is a mechanism that's, that has an indirect effect on insulin right? So, so fructose metabolism when consumed in excess does in fact lead to insulin resistance, which by its very definition leads to hyperinsulinemia. But, but the work you allude to in, in colonic cancer by Lou Cantley, uh, actually posits that, you know, that it's the energetic issue in the cell that you alluded to of the trans and, and Johnson as well. It's this lowering of, um, of ATP in the process of metabolizing fructose, and it's that um, that ADP ATP um, sort of switch that that can drive the hyper influx of, of glucose, and that's not necessarily an insulin driven phenomenon. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.